Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8 egg garden. And today we're gonna to be doing a tour of all of my heirloom chrysanthemums. Stop, stop it. I have to work, stop it. Go away. Okay, my son and husband are looking at me through the window trying to freak me out. Okay, so this is not how I wanted to do my chrysanthemum tour. It has been raining for two days, and we are expecting our first freeze, which is about two weeks early. Um, and so my chrysanthemums are just getting started. And while mums do handle cold weather really well, a freeze is not going to be great for them. And so I thought, well, let me just go ahead and do a tour so you guys can see what I have. And then if the freeze isn't as bad as we think it's going to be, which is probably going to be as bad as we think it's going to be, then I can go back and get some additional footage for you all of what these look like. I would only say about 50 to 60% of the varieties have actually bloomed at this point. Most of them are still in the bud stage and would be blooming over the next two weeks. But... It is what it is. I'm still incredibly excited about the chrysanthemums. They have been absolutely wonderful. There's tons of varieties that have done great. There's a couple of varieties that have not done so great. And so I'm really excited to show you all. So I'm gonna start with just a general walk through the chrysanthemums, showing you some close-ups of some different ones, that type of thing. And then I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna talk about each of the individual varieties that ended up growing this year and how well they actually did in my space. So this is the major chrysanthemum bed right here. I believe I have 16, 15 to 16 different varieties of chrysanthemums in this space. I do also have them in some containers and I have them in another portion of the garden, but we'll go ahead and start with this one. Okay, so just a few basics. I do have landscape fabric underneath here um, because this bed actually used to have lots of amaranthus in it and the seeds just keep coming up for years and years to come. So I do have landscape fabric and then I have mulch over the top. I cut a space for each of the plants, got them planted in, and then they each have drip lines run to them. So I don't have like a general like watering the whole thing. They have a drip run to the very base of the plant. And I think that's really helpful with mums to prevent any rotting. So let's start with, we'll start with this variety right in front. I'm just going to give you guys some close-ups, talk about um, the, let me find the names. I've got most of them labeled, but it's still going to be a process. This variety is called Grape Queen, and it is definitely supposed to be darker than what you're currently seeing here. And you can see some just starting to open here and they definitely have a light purple kind of look but very pretty very prolific plant this is all one plant this guy was planted this spring now you can see i do have right in front of it i have some much smaller plants and these are the plants that i got from um, king's mums and they were just um, basically cuttings and so those are much smaller in scale than the full-size plants that i got from uh, bluestone perennials this guy back here is called french vanilla it's been very hardy. Its blooms are gorgeous and I've already harvested quite a few stems from it. I've been very happy with its look. Now this variety right here is called Helen May and it's a, just a very soft pink and it has multiple blooms at the end of each stem. Very pretty. None of these are all the way open yet. I think this is probably the closest, but a very soft pink color, a little bit shorter, but really nice. Let's see what other ones we can look at. This guy right here is called Fall Charm, and these are some really long stems, like two feet long. Um, its plant is actually right here, but it grew out to the side over here. Um, but it's very happy, it's doing really well. It kind of fades from a pink to kind of an orangey um, amber color in the center, which is really nice. This guy right here is called Coral Cavalier, and you can see within a couple of days, it's gonna be full blown and absolutely gorgeous. It's very tall stems, very healthy plant. This one gets pretty tall. We'll talk more in detail about it. 
Okay, this variety right here is called Homecoming, and it's a football mum, so it's a much bigger size mum. This guy's about three inches. I would say this stem is a little shorter than I thought it was going to be, but the mum is absolutely stunning, and it has several more. Let's see. <clears throat> All of these are it um, right there. So it does have several more that are going to bloom, but I don't think they're going to bloom in time before the freeze. Okay, and then we have this variety right here, which is called Cheerleader. This is a football mum as well, really beautiful color. And um, it has several blooms that still might bloom before the frost, we'll see. Um, our temperatures aren't gonna get any warmer, so I don't know. I, I, I mean, as excited as I am as everything's done, I'm just sad that it's gonna get cold before they have an opportunity to come to fruition. And I think as the plants mature over the years, they'll continue to do better and be bigger. And I think that this is also um, important for me. I think I trim these in July, maybe next year I need to trim them in June to give them a little bit more jump on their blooming season. Now I have a couple of cuttings that I got from King's Mums that did not make it into the ground yet. This first one is called Lily Gallon. It's from King's Mums and it's a large purple variety. It's probably three feet tall. <laughs> so yeah, that one's doing really well. Another one from King's Mons that has not made it into the ground is called St. Tropez, and it's kind of a red medium color, or medium size. Look at all those buds. Now, these ones that are in pots, I will bring in during the freeze and then bring them back out. So I still will probably get some mums from these, some blooms from these. And then the last variety over here is called Coca, Coco Bunny. And it is very, very healthy as well. It's getting close to blooming. Now I have a couple of varieties over here that I planted in containers. They have not done as well, and I think it's because they don't have enough sun. This one is called Le Mans. It's a lavender color. This one actually looks like it is struggling with um, mealybugs. I got a lot of them. So I don't really expect much out of that guy. I just want it to allow it to continue to grow and then overwinter and start fresh. Over here we have another variety called Rose Dew. And we do have some blooms blooming. It's a very subtle pink tone. I actually think it looks very similar to the French vanilla. But that one is doing pretty well. And all of these, these two were um, cuttings. So these were very small plants. So the fact that they're producing any blooms is amazing. Now over here has been a mixed <laughs> review. All of these were different cuttings and I don't recall the names of them and of course I did not label them so I'll put the labels up there. This one at the end and I'll put the label of whatever it is below is doing pretty well. Look at those sweet little buds. So cute. That one's doing pretty well but not so much on like this variety right here. I think the plant is still alive. I just think that they didn't do very well, but they might improve. We still have time on that for future years. They survived, so <laughs> that's the big deal. And a lot of these I cut it, I, I planted these cuttings at the beginning of the summer. And so that does make a difference. They did not get as long to produce roots prior to all of our drought and crazy hot weather. Okay, so let's talk about the mums. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to talk about the mums. I'm gonna put up a picture of what they currently look like and what the stock photo is from Bluestone Perennials website for this first badge. And then we'll go on to the king mums. So I want you to see what I ended up having versus what the picture was that I was shown when I was purchasing. Now, I have no expectation that these would even have that many flowers that they do this year. I was very happy and very surprised that I got so much from them this year. I fully expect the next two years to be absolutely um, amazing as these continue to grow. So let's get started. The first one is Helen May. All right, so Helen May is a light shell pink garden mum producing many large flowers on medium to tall plants. It says it needs plenty of room and blooms late fall, late summer um, in a late summer fall garden. Now we had a much hotter fall than we typically do, so it does explain that you know why they didn't bloom as early. 
Um, it is hardy and zoned a five to seven. It is about 18 to 36 inches tall. I thought the Helen May did pretty good for its first year. The next one is called Ticonderoga. And this is a voluminous flower aglow with copper yellow petals that make Ticonderoga a warm addition to your fall garden. Gigantic corsage type flowers on tall sturdy plants to the equal of florist months. Um, and this one is Hardy and Zones 5 to 9. It is about 36 inches tall. It is not currently bloomed yet for me. Um, I think if we had the next two weeks, it would be good to go. The next one is Cheerleader, and it is a brushed amber petals of football mum. Cheerleader remain huddled close in the center. Gigantic corsage type flowers on tall sturdy plants, the equal of florist mums. And it is, uh, it zones five to seven and 36 inches tall. I do think that it resembles the photo very much. And um, I have a lot of hopes for this plant as it begins to mature over the years. All right, the next variety is Fall Charm. And it's uh, alluring gold central petals of uh, Mum Fall Charm are surrounded by deep lavender. Superb flowers provides a display for six to eight weeks in the fall. Um, I think that this one looks very much like the photo. Um, Hardy and Zones 5 to 9, and it is about 24 to 36 inches tall. And if this is how this mom performed this first year. I cannot wait to see it in the future. Okay, the next variety is called Grape Queen, and that one is the one that looks more lavender um, than dark. You guys tell me what you think. It is blossoms of purple grape tones are accented with white on the reverse side of the petals to create a silver silvery sheen. Um, mum, uh, Grape Queen is from our Football Mum collection, and so it's one of the gigantic florist style um, flowers on tall sturdy plants. Hardy zones 5 to 9, and it's about 3 feet tall. I'm not unhappy with it being, you know, lavender. That's fine. It's just maybe once they bloomed out longer, it'll be a grape color. I'm not sure. Now the next variety I have is Fred Stone. I do not know where that one is. I do have some mums that are unlabeled um, at this point. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that one did. So, um, so that one is supposed to be a deep claret. Red blooms of Fred Stone will drink in the sun's fading rays. Superb flowers provides a display for six to eight weeks. Um, and it's zones five to nine. And it's a medium height, 24 to 36 inches tall. Next on the list is called uh, Homecoming. And the football mom homecoming progress fr progress from burnished salmon to soft peach, ending with creamy yellow. Gigantic corsage type flowers on tall sturdy plants. And this one is equal to a florist flower as well. Zones five to nine, and it's about 36 inches tall. Um, I definitely think it's shorter uh, than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be much taller. It's currently shorter. But I do think the flower looks very much like the photo, and I'm very excited to see what this does over the years. Now, one thing I'm kind of looking forward to is all my mums typically bloom in the spring as well, but th all these plants I got in spring to early summer. So I'm excited to see them go over winter and then perhaps give me a crop of flowers in the spring, then cut them all back and get them prepped for another round in the fall. Now this one I forgot to show y'all while I was out there. This is called Pink Crust and it's called Pretty in Pink. Pink Crest exhibits rosy pink blossoms with a cherry yellow, uh, cheery yellow eye, produces many petite flowers on medium to tall plants. This was supposed to be about 18 to 36 inches tall. It's definitely on the shorter side, the 18 inch tall at this point. I'm going to give it another year. If it stays short, then I think I'm going to go ahead and move that one to my front landscape, I think would be really nice because it feels a little bit more like a landscape flower as opposed to a cut flower. And it is also also at Hardy and Zones 5 to 9. Okay, so the next variety is called Coral Cavalier, and it's large flowers of varying shades of rose to rust make this Coral Cavalier astonishing in its presentation. Gigantic corsage type flowers on tall, sturdy plants, and it's zones 5 to 9, 36 inches tall as well. And I definitely think the flowers are lending themselves to that. I would think, I think the Coral Cavalier is one of the most prolific plants that I have currently going in there. And so I'm very excited. It's a bunch of smaller 
smaller blooms, I feel like on the top as opposed to one large like corsage bloom. Um, but I have a lot of hopes for that one. Next is French Vanilla. And this one has produced the best. This one produced really well even in the spring. I got some blooms. But it's producing pretty well. I will say I think the color is a little bit different than what I expected. It's currently described as a light apricot shades of French vanilla progress in French sweet cream colored outer petals, large showy flowers on tall sturdy stems. I feel like mine has more of a yellow tone as opposed to an apricot tone. I'll put pictures up and you guys tell me what you think. And it is in zones five, it's hardy in zones five to nine and the plants are about 36 inches tall. I do have a lot of hope for this over the years. I think that it is going to be a beautiful producing plant. And the fact that it has a white tone flower is wonderful because I don't actually grow a lot of white flowers in my garden. Okay, that is all that I have for Bloomstone Perennial. Okay, so next let's talk about the ones that I got from King's Month. So differences. The Bluestone Perennials were fuller plants. They were grown on longer. Um, they had obviously had other cuttings taking off of them, but they were more robust plants with a bigger root system. They cost more for that reason too. From King's Moms, I got cuttings, rooted cuttings. So they were very small, I'll put a picture of what they kind of looked like. Um, and they just had very small, simple root systems. And I got them at the end of their season with what they had left over. I wasn't a prior um, customer to them. So they kind of, they sent out to all of their um, prior customers first. Anybody's ordered to them in the past, they get first dibs. And then everything that's left over, they'll open up to new customers. So I got offered what was left over. So let's talk about some of the different varieties I got and how well they did. So the first variety um, that did okay was called Cocoa Bun Me. And this was a really large one. I'll put a picture of what it's supposed to look like. Um, it's an in-curving bloom with florets of lavender pink with purple reverse. A very typical Japanese style flower with a long skirt of trailing florets and early bloom for this class. So that one is doing well, but it's not currently producing blooms. And I do feel like because these cuttings um, did not have as big of a root system that that's really what they've been concentrating on this year as opposed to producing a bunch of foliage or a bunch of blooms. So I do have high hopes for it next year. Now another variety I tried and it did not make it, it died, was called White Out and this is a large paper white irregular curve with loosely and curving florets. A fine example of an exhibition type bloom for show or garden display. Blooms held perfectly erect can be grown in pots as well. This one was a cutting that I put into the ground and I forgot to water it. So I don't think it was because of the company or anything. I think it was just pure lack of I missed it. So I'll probably look at reordering that one in the future. All right, another one that I ordered from King's Mums was called Le Mans, and this one was really pretty. I was really excited about it, and it's a large orchid pink in curve of perfect form produced on short stem. An excellent potted plant needs no growth retardant, Stro uh, strong and reliable French import disc bud to crown or terminal bud. So this is the one that had the mealybugs um, going on with it, and I really think it's because it didn't get enough sun, so I'll probably look at either getting it planted into the ground or are moving that out into the garden this next year. Okay, the next variety is Apricot Alexis, and I believe this is the, one of the ones that died. Um, I did lose several of the cuttings kind of earlier on, basically from lack of watering um, ended up being the issue. This one blooms of its this size in light apricot are rare. All the excel, uh, excellent and curving forms of the parent Alexis disc bud to um, crown bud. So this one did not make it. So I might look at where you're ordering that one as well. Next is Rose Dew, and this is another one that was in one of the containers, and this is an early blooming old favorite that we are offering again. A rosy pink intermediate in curve that blooms with a durable hard finish produces good exhibition or garden flowers. A fairly low grower that um, looks good in containers. Flower on second crown bud. And this one is really beautiful and it is, while it is growing, I think it's really reaching for the sun as obvious um, when we're looking at it. And so it will need to be moved somewhere else. It's a mosquito, y'all. Okay, another one of the varieties that I got from cutting was Saint Tropez. This is a French import of incurving form in a deep crimson with bronze reverse, not a common color, bred for use as a pot plant with strong stem and foliage. This one grows about 15 to 20 inches tall, and this is one of the cuttings that is planted but is not currently producing. 
Okay, next one. This is a palm and it's like a pom pom look. This one's Kelvin Mandarin pom poms with desired round form and rich deep orange color are rare. This is exactly such an occult, occult bar. Very good terminal spray form and vigorous growth habit. I believe this one is the one with the tight little balloons that I'll put a picture up on. So it is doing well, but it's producing some blooms, but it's not super robust yet. I think next year it will be great. Now, one variety of the cuttings was Daybreak, and it is a large apricot orange anemone with large orange cushion, a blue ribbon show flower, best grown as a disbud. And this one is also one of the cuttings that is not currently producing. Basically, almost all of the King's Mums are not currently producing. I think they will in the future, though. Now, Purple Light is one of the Kim's Mums ones, and I believe this one died earlier on. This purple short of First Light is sure to catch the eye of the judge. The color is outstanding. A uh, took best anemone at the national show in 2002. It is easy growth habit and color. Make this a must for any grower. Okay, and one of the spoon varieties we are growing, or a spider kind of um, variety, is called Oriental Night. I can't remember if this one made it or not. I kind of feel like it didn't, but I'm not sure. This cultivar was listed in Tex King's first catalog in 1952, a dark purple, purple with a slight silver reverse, the darkest of any flower in our catalog, category. And our, in our catalog, flower arrangers will lose this, love this one, grow as a disbud or spray. Okay, another one is called uh, Lava, and this one is long buff yellow florets with slightly curled ends of light red earlier than most spider types and a beautiful sight to behold. This guy does not have how tall it is, but sorry. Um, that one's a cool one. Another one is Mocha, which I was very excited about. Of course, I haven't seen its bloom yet. This dusty mauve colored spider brings a mind, a cup of creamy mocha. The large two petals have burgundy tips, a real beauty for exhibition. Another one, which is still in its pot, hasn't been planted in the ground yet, is Lily Gallon, a large showy reflexing bloom of unusual color combination, a very long, deep wine purple florets that curl to show stunning reverse color of silver, a unique short growing French cultivar. That one's really pretty. Another one is called Satin Ribbons, and this was the one I was most excited about. This cultivar has unusual, attractive, open center blooms of shining pink, the trailing Petals are reminiscent of a beautiful satin bow on a gift box. Okay, and I believe that is all of the King's Mums cuttings. So let's talk about things that I have learned from growing them this last spring, summer, and into fall season. First thing I've learned is the more robust of a root system you have in the plant, the more it's going to produce sooner. So if that's something that's of a concern to you, I highly suggest investing in more of a full-grown plant as opposed to a cutting. Now, if you're trying to be more budget conscious, definitely go for the cutting. It's way less expensive and you are going to get beautiful plants out of it. Secondly, plant these when it is cooler outside. The bluestone perennial ones, they were more robust plants, but they were planted earlier on in the spring, whereas the cuttings were not planted until June when we were already having days in the upper 90s. So the cuttings did not fare as well because they went into immediate drought mode throughout the whole summer, and they're really just now getting rain in the month of October. I did set all of them up to have a drip system, which I think was very important and really helped a lot of them survive over the years. I do think mums can get powdery mildew and have some disease issues if you are watering them from above. So I do highly suggest having a drip system set up. I ended up fertilizing each of these as I planted each one. I fertilized them all with plant tone. I will need to go back um, in the spring season and go ahead and hit them with additional fertilizer at the beginning of the growing season. I did not add any additional um, fertilizers with some liquid fertilizer, but that's about it. So that is something to consider as well. Now I do have mums in my front garden bed that I never fertilize and they always do brilliantly. Cutting mums back at the right time is super important. I planted mine and just allowed them to grow during the spring. I got a few blooms, no big deal. I did not cut my plants back until July, and I think it was kind of later in July is when I cut back all my mums. Let me see the date. I cut them back on July 21st. I do think if I had cut them back at the end of June, beginning of July, that we would be looking at a beautiful, full, robust garden 
covered in balloons. So that is something to really consider. I will have to be more stringent about that next year and making sure that I get them cut back at the end of the June, no further than July 4th. So I haven't run into too many pests with the exception of that one particular one that had the mealy bugs. And that's just recent right there. So um, I'll have to keep an eye on that particular one. I think that if it was more out in the sun um, and had less shade, that it probably would do better. And it probably wouldn't struggle as, as, with as many pests. And finally, will I continue to grow heirloom chrysanthemums? Yeah, I love them. I'm already obsessed. I'm not even getting like a full cycle of blooms and I'm totally into them. I'm really excited about the potential for them over the years. Definitely think there's going to be some things I'm going to need to do differently next year, including better staking process. I think it's going to be really important, but I am so excited with the direction that they are going and the potential for these plants over the years. If this is what they're giving me after only being in my hands for the last six to seven months, I'm so excited to see what they're going to look like in the future. Okay. At this point, I'm going to start harvesting some of the mums that I already have. And I want you guys to go ahead and drop any comments that you have regarding regarding heirloom chrysanthemums, if you're growing any, if you have any suggestions, or if you have any questions about growing them. We're gonna go ahead and start harvesting some of the blooms, not all of them, because I do wanna leave some of them to see if I can get them to um, open up a little bit as we go into this cooler weather. But I wanna go ahead and harvest a bunch of them and put together a beautiful bouquet for my mom. Mm -hmm. 